Hi, I'm Lorna from Claimers Punch Embroidery and I thought today I would share how we frame up our fabric to make sure it's nice and tough. Hi, now we're going to work with our card size frame, but the same principles apply to whatever size you're going to use. So get your fabric design face up and place it centred on your frame so that you can stitch to the edge of your design. And we're just going to pin two corners either side, making sure the fabric is straight and fairly firm. Then before you do anything else, we're going to fill in between and we're going to place them about what 20 centimetre, 20 millimetres or approximately an inch apart. Basically, that didn't work, did it? Basically, it's so that your fabric can be nice and firm and it's held straight. Doing the drawing pins much closer, you're not going to achieve anything, but making sure your thumb can touch each pin between. We're going to do the second side, again, just straight now if you're using a frame that's already been used, make sure you go into fresh timber, don't go into a hole that's already established. Might be easier to put the, tim the pin in, but you will find that it's not going to hold firm for very long. I'm using our pin pusher, which has got a magnet on the end, which makes it nice and easy and a lot easier on my thumbs. Again, all approximately one thumbprint apart. Now we're going to do the last corner. This time I'm going to make sure the fabric is tight in both directions and pin. The larger the frame, the tighter that pull needs to be. Now for the last two sides, I'm going to pull and pin. I find it easier to work away from myself. That way I can get more pressure on the fabric. I start at the centre and work out in either direction. Again, making sure they're about one thumbprint apart. Final side, again the same thing, nice and firm. You'll notice that I'm pulling with two fingers, pushing with the rest of my fingers, and it's pulling it nice and firm. This way, you do not have to use a lot of extra power, but you can make sure that your fabric is nice and tight, which is critical for when you're stitching. So it doesn't matter what size you're using, you need to pin up like that. So a bigger size, the pins are still one thumbprint apart. Hi, it's Lorna again and I thought today I would share with you how you can get the skeins as they come in your kit onto your spools without too many dramas. What we do is we start off with the skein and just take tags off. So there's that one there and then the bottom one, just pull it off but before you discard it, make sure you write the number onto your spool so that it's nice and visible. Okay. Having done that, then you will find that there's a section that's got a knot in it. And I'm just going to grab hold of the knot, don't undo it, and just open the skein up into a bigger loop. Now you can undo the knot, and usually fingernails is all you really need, and it just comes undone. And at this point, I'm going to let one end drop, and then I'm just going to move it around, and let that end continue to fall to the floor. When you've done that, you'll come obviously to the other end. Now you'll notice that I'm bouncing it as I go, otherwise the end is just as likely to tie itself up in a knot and it'll take you a bit longer to do. Having done that, I'm going to grab our spool, hook it into the side and wind. Having wound it up, I'm then going to hook it into 
the bottom end there and leave myself a tail. Now to unravel the thread, because we don't work it in the cord form, we need to undo the very end. And it's picking at the very, very end of your thread till you get a bit of a tassel off. Hanging on to the tassel and the cord firmly, sharp yank and pull. And that will give you the desired effect. If you're doubtful about the, the right pull, if you do yourself a measured distance, it usually comes to about five times the distance. Once you've done it, release and let it relax. Today I'm going to show you how we use our stitch perfection needle and its advantages. So for threading up the needle, you need your long needle threader and it's point to point or metal to metal. Just push the thread up all the way through. It obviously will come out the other end and we're going to drop the thread in there. Pull it back and then disconnect the threader. I find it easier to push the threader up and the thread will come away fairly easily. Hanging on to the very end, bringing it to the base of your needle, just pull back the excess. Having done that, you're now ready to stitch. We showed you how to frame up. Now with our first stitch, we're going to punch the needle into the fabric as far as it can go. We're going to turn it over and we're going to pull that tail out to the back. And I'm just going to reduce it so that it's not so much waste underneath. Now, as if I'm colouring in, I'm going to pull the needle out, run it along the surface and push it in. Now, when we're doing things like the cards, we keep the stitches down to about this size. When you're doing bigger designs, your stitches can be three or four times this length. You'll notice that every time I push that needle in, it's going full depth. And I'm just dragging it along the surface as if it's a colouring in pencil. Just letting it roll and just taking it easy. Now as I come back, I'm just going to push that thread out of the way slightly underneath, but I'm making sure that I go into a new hole in the fabric. I'm not lining those punch points up. And it's just, as I said, basically like you're colouring in. Running it along and making sure there's no tension on the thread as it goes in. When you're finished, not that that is, but just for the exercise today, when you're finished you need to grab your scissors. I'll pull a little bit of pressure on the thread and I'll snip. And you have your stitching done.